Ray doing the first part of the presentation, and it's called Screencasting. Even though it sounds like something for Hollywood. On the 64. <laughs> on the 64? It sounds like he's doing casting for Hollywood, uh, actors for Hollywood TV shows and movies. He's doing screencasting. On the Would you like to audition? Come on up. Yes, he wants to audition. Too. Okay, so take it away. All right, so you all know what screencasting is, right? It's pretty, pretty hot out there on the internet. People make YouTube videos of their screens going on. Well, we now have screencasting on the Commodore 64. So this is... Um, Stop laughing. What's that? Screencasting is taking your screen and casting it into the ocean. No. <laughs> that's, Damn, that's, that's worse than drag and drop. That's, video, that's you video pollution. your screen and you, everything you do on your screen is broadcast. So screen, cast, broadcast, screen, like screen, screen recording. Oh, okay. Recording. Screen that's how, that's screen what capturing. some people call capturing it. Capturing the screen? Yes. No, not capturing. Live screencasting. Oh, I will be doing something on one screen, on my one <laughs> Commodore 64, and you'll see it repeated on the other Commodore 64. Oh, it's and, and not just one, it can broadcast to all of you. If you all had a Commodore 64 on right now in front of you, you could be watching the same thing at the same time in real time. That sounds like socialism. <laughs> well, if you're all in your own homes and you want to watch what I'm typing on my 64, this is how you do it. Use the screen cap. It's gotten out of control. So, this program is a program that, that Steve wrote um, for the 64. It's called Control-Alt-64. And I wrote the server part, which is a piece that runs on Commodore server that handles the broadcasting of the data. So there's going to be a host computer, which is the one that is broadcasting, or broadcaster. And then any of the other um, people that connect to watch are called viewers. So this, this guy right here will be the host. I've already loaded up the program and started the screencast. This one's going to connect to the screencast to, to watch. So um, this one's already broadcasting, but it's broadcasting to nobody. So right here, I'm going to um, look to see what's available. And there's a screencast available. Screencast number 631 is available, convex. So I'll go 631. And you'll see that it's doing a refresh. And now everything on this screen is now repeated over there. And this cursor blinking is really deceptive because you can't type. It's just a viewer. So I can type over here, and you'll see it over there. So if you had one of these at your house, you could be watching the exact same thing. So we won't do that. But you can type. You can look at programs. And you can go up with your cursor and move over here and change stuff. And it's all repeated um, on the viewer 64 suit. So that's pretty neat, but um, what can you do with this? There's a lot of things you can do. You can play games. Well, you can watch somebody playing a game. You could um, watch somebody programming. So if you wanted to do a lesson on programming, you can do the programming over. Oh, oh. Agent Friday just joined. He's now watching on his computer over there. Isn't this stalking? Kick him off. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you stalking a person? So uh, you, could, you could be doing tutorials if you wanted to teach programming, or, or if you wanted to learn programming, you would watch somebody teaching programming. Um, I need my SD card. Thank you. But I just type new. There's nothing there now. So. Just for fun, I'm going to load up a game, and this is called Labyrinth. Remember that old share, not shareware, public, public domain. domain game, Labyrinth? Yep. I think it was on the bonus disc. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. And bonus cassette. Yeah. So um, this version of Labyrinth was modified by Steve oh. Oh. to have a bigger map, and also the map if you go with a bigger map, the problem with the original Labyrinth was a bigger map couldn't fit on a screen. So Steve made it so that it uses the quarter, um, quarter, square, graphics. quarter square graphics and 
what that means is it basically shrinks your resolution down and that way you can get a bigger map. Um, and you'll see that when we do a map. So this is an hope this is the right version version. that yeah. is public domain? It's just I'll private to him. I right can now. release it, but I haven't had it. You could you release you it, yes. Release, you, you can't release it to anyone here at the show? Like if oh, we, yeah. Oh, okay, very good. Yeah. We could give you a, I'll a, give you a, a copy. disc and you can make a copy. Oh. Certainly. All right. But as you can see, it takes just as long to load on the viewing app um, as it does on the actual. And actually, it's probably locked up. Why is that? <laughs> Remember, you have to disable in order to load. Do you? I thought it disabled it automatically. I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, because on a real 64. In Vice, it uses the not the true data. OK, hold on just a second. Is it? What do I have to do? Just go ahead and load it. Now? Yeah, load Labyrinth. So what I've done is I've disconnected momentarily from the screencast. The viewers still think it's loading, and that's OK. They can't see what I'm doing. How, how did you disconnect from the screencast? I just hit Run, Stop, Restore. OK. And what that did was it just stopped broadcasting momentarily. Okay. That's a workaround because right now there's a, a bug where you can't load from an IEC device during the broadcast or it interferes. Okay. Yeah, the, the uh, serial bus conflicts with the RS-232 port. It's a documented thing in the programmer's reference guide. Okay. okay. Now two two seven. That was eight. Five, two, two, four plus three. So we're back. And it looks like we're done loading. So now you can see the program is there. You just type right. So how big of a labyrinth should we make? The big, big, big labyrinth or just a little tiny one? <laughs> About a five by five to start with. So these lines that are going up, that's just a sort of reminder to the broadcaster that somebody's watching you. Oh, the lines, oh, those lines going yeah. up? Yeah, it, it just basically tells you they do not show your broadcasting. Well, they barely show up on my video screen here on my camcorder. Yeah. So my camcorder is barely picking it up. So there's the map. So basically, we go up, left, up, left, right. Okay. So forward. Forward. There we go. There we go. Labyrinth. Oh, yeah. Go down the corner. So we're doing this at 2400 baud. And you can see that the viewer is keeping up pretty well. Um, but almost. It's slowing down the broadcaster, too. So. It's drawing about half the speed, it, or a third of the speed it normally. Do you want to take over the presentation? I, sorry. <laughs> What's I'll, the I'll shut up. Can we do video, live video screen? That's what we're doing right here. Live. Live, live. So, live. Like bitmap, like instantaneous pop on the screen? Instantaneous. See, this one's, this one's watching what's actually going on. I understand that. Can I load up, like, um, Mission Impossible? No. Sure. Am I going to get audio over there too? Nope. It's because audio is. Are they going to refund? Audio is <laughs> write only. There's no way to look at what registers are going on on this source right. computer and broadcast those things. So you can load one of the uh, 64 demos and then play it. And sure. But it probably won't work. Oh. Okay. No, there's, there's things that it can't do. Um, right now, all it does is just the. Um, Character out, whatever goes through your care out. Oh, through so FP2? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You hooked into that? I'll show you one other thing it can do right, as soon as we escape this labyrinth. That's pretty long for a 5x5. Five five. Uh, we're almost out. Welcome back. So, um, one of the reasons it keeps up so well in drawing so much is. Steve implemented um, run length encoding and uh, run length encoding. Compression. 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 Good job, Steve. <laughs> and that cuts down, way down on the amount of traffic that needs to be Bandwidth, sent yeah. over the internet. Yeah. 
Especially things like that with the tons of repeating patterns. Okay. Oh, look, we're almost there. We have escaped. So I'm going to do another game just real quick, just so you can see the, the really big map. So the original, I thought the original labyrinth was done in basic. It is. This it is, is in basic. basic. Still basic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which is probably why it's going to take so long to create a 38 by 21. But um, what was the what was the original maximum dimension on the original labyrinth? About half. Nineteen by ten by nineteen. And if you try to bump into a wall, it will change the border color. So that one oh, let's try that. Uh, um, Greg, I, I've used uh, the super CPU with lab and I've sped it up greatly. Would a super CPU benefit this in any way? Uh, does it collide with any memory locations that are... Uh, with your version, I do not know. Probably not. Um, it just uses the, the I.O. range, right? It only modifies I.O. The yeah. Super CPU. Anyone? Anyone? The main thing is, that, is having a comet that works with the Super CPU. Um, I have a 38K driver that I made for JBEV that does work on the Super CPU. Where's my work key? Call yeah. W. Yeah. So what's the next number of lines you have? N. It doesn't slow down? It probably does because the broadcaster, the server, would obviously have to go through more clients to serve. But, but it's who's actually doing the broadcasting? It's, is it the Commodore server? So this? Computer sends data to um, an app server through Commodore server. So there's an app server that hooks into Commodore server, and anything, and there's a mode that you can go into where, where you get direct communication to the app server. So, so it connects to the app server, sends the data, and then the app server also knows who else is connected into the same game. It's not really a game, but it's called a game on Commodore server. Um, and so it knows everybody that's attached to it. So it then forwards that packet on as it comes in. It's pretty fast. I think we've tested, what, about 15 clients? Yeah. And it was fine. Yeah. Wow. Finally. Finally. <laughs> Whoa. So yeah, you've never seen Labyrinth like this before. <laughs> So that's a labyrinth I will not attempt to go through. <laughs> uh, it would take you days to go through that? But you can't do will it. Well, it's, 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 it's finishing. Snapshot with your phone. What? You can snapshot with your phone. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. Pixel yeah. It's cheap. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it's oh, you have to go through. Well, you can hit the HT. You can hit the HT any time to see the map. Oh. Well, you can hit the HT any time. You can hit the HT any time to see the map. Oh, and wasn't there a back command, too? Yeah, Steve I added added. Back. yeah, so you can back up in this version. Yeah, so you got forward, and then you can just go back. Oh, before you had to go left, left, forward, right, right. <laughs> and the back command is just B for back. B. Yeah. yeah, and I think I added a strafe left and right with the greater than and less than, but I'm I'm not sure if I that got cool. that in that version. But we haven't added the monsters yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> or the multiplayer aspect. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That'd be fun. Hey Steve, this takes how big is the code for that? Yeah, how much space? The broadcaster. No, I meant for the labyrinth game. Oh, the labyrinth game? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But I could, we could look. Um, I don't know, but I, so it needs to be done. Yeah. Okay, you missed that, camera. Audience. Camera? Camera <laughs> audience. I've never been called camera before. Our, our okay. audience missed that. Yeah. So you I'm facing a wall. Ca camera man. I'm going to bump person. right into it. Ouch. Ouch. Did you see that? Uh, no. Flash <laughs> the border. Okay, I'm going to go for it again. Ouch. The border. Oh, Lakes. that's the border. So the border, is the border actually broadcast as well. So that's what I wanted to show you. That you can go 532, 80, 
So there's, are those the only two pokes that those you support? Those are the only two right now. But I'm going to use the same method to catch direct screen writes eventually. So we'll list the program. So obviously there's some delay. It's a lot of data being rebroadcast. So this is merely sending all this data, but that's like catching up. Not bad though. No. So it's at 2,000, 1,900. So not too bad. Hmm. And that almost as long to list as it is to generate a map. It's pretty long. Okay, so any questions about the broadcast? Is this something that we can just get off Commodore server? Yes, it's on the so on Commodore server there's a there's a public folder and in that whenever you connect to Commodore server you attach it automatically attaches the V fifteen forty one disk, which is the main disk that has most of the stuff. And it's called screencast okay. and we we've done screencasts at our club meetings um, so if you ever join us on our club meeting night and we happen to be doing a screencast you can watch it um, we've done like on the fly programming and, and people can watch us see what we're programming and then we can save the file to the server and you guys can download it from the server so it's kind of handy what's the latest version of 2.4, and that's been out for about a year. Okay. Um, I have I have a new update that that I'm gonna do, but I have to like shrink it down a little bit. It's getting kind of big, so <laughs> do some optimization on it. So it's obviously a stretch, but um, with the screen share, I was wondering, have you envisioned a device that would then? allow the people to talk to each other. Yeah, that's on our that's on our list to do. Um, both both send messages and like give somebody control. Oh, there's there's another feature that we're not using right now which allows the broadcaster, this person, to um, have say a separate computer hooked into chat. So people who are in the chat room right now saw that we're using the broadcast and, and the chat room announces that there's a broadcast going on. But if the, if, if the host of this broadcast is on another computer logged into chat and he says something, that chat message will be displayed in the screencast. So that if you're not in chat and you're only watching the screencast, at least you can, the host can give messages to, to the viewers. So it pops up a little window right here in the top and says whatever they said, and, and then it will disappear. Is it to everybody or can you mute people? The, everybody. the chat message would go to everybody in the room, okay. but the pop-up message would only go to the, to the viewers. 